What is frailty? I think it's something people think they can identify and when they look at an older adult and they may say, oh, you know, he or she is getting increasingly frail, but what does that really mean? And even among the medical community, they don't really have a large consensus about what frailty is as far as a definition. But these are some of the components that you, you know, you might um, assume would be part of becoming frail. Um, typically, people who are frail are going to be 65 and older. Be very unlikely that someone would be frail younger than that. So there is some interaction of normal aging plus some sort of chronic disease. They tend to get very weak, so muscle weakness, slow walking speed. Any of your grandparents, great grandparents, you know, they walk much more slowly. People who are frail, they also tend to be very, you know, thin, particularly unintentional weight loss. You know, appetite changes as people get older. So they tend to not eat as much. Maybe they have teeth issues, dental issues. So they maybe don't want to eat as much, you know, decreased taste of food, um, decreased physiological reserve. So you're not strong, so you're, you're more weak. So the lower your baseline level of strength, your max strength and your everyday functioning is going to go down. The lower your aerobic endurance, you know, your VO2 max, then you're going to work at a lower, even lower percent of that. So it's important to, to keep physiological functioning, you know, as best as they can. Lesser ability to respond to any type of stress, whether it's a physical stress, such as an illness, or, or whether it's an emotional stress. Longer recovery from illnesses. Once they get sick, if they get the flu, they can really, you know, that can really um, tie them up for quite a amount of time. It'll take them longer to recover. Of course, we talked about increased falls and injuries. Big fear of older adults that, you know, if they fall, is that really going to put them in a downward spiral? So, you know, falls, um, hip fractures, we'll talk about that when we get to the osteoporosis class. Lesser ability to maintain their homeostasis. Many of them will have multiple chronic diseases, so you can see how this starts to impact they're older, plus they may have several multiple chronic diseases. We talked a little bit about nutritional problems. They could have some malabsorption issues. And I think it's cut off at the bottom of the slide, but also sarcopenia, loss of muscle. Some of the medical conditions associated with frailty, you can look at the table here. You know, all the different systems are going to be affected. So anything from pulmonary to heart, uh, gastrointestinal, eyes and ears, and psychiatric. So, you know, take a good look. And this is also table 26.2 in the chronic disease and disabilities text. Body composition in older adults. So body weight and fat mass tend to increase overall for people as they get older, and that is unfortunately a natural function of aging, it appears to be, but frail adults tend to have a very low body weight. And as we mentioned on the previous slide, the loss in size of muscle cells, sarcopenia, so they are really going to lose muscle mass. Uh, back when, and I think I've talked to you about this when we did our gross anatomy lab, and some of the um, other students who had cadavers who were really old, you know, close to 90 years old, you know, their muscle mass was so small, they really couldn't even see the muscles. They were so atrophied. Uh, so they had to look at some of the younger cadavers to really get a good look at the muscles. Bone density decreases. We'll do a whole class on osteoporosis. So we talked about body composition and body fat changes. There's more intra-abdominal fat so more, uh, more muscle on the torso. So the, the limbs tend to get smaller, but the torso fat tends to increase. And this is especially true for women after menopause and that perimenopausal time. Uh, less subcutaneous fat. So if you're doing skin fold measurements on older adults, it's gonna be very challenging to do skin folds because 
The skin's going to be very compressible, but yet there's not a lot of fat there. You may be able to pull a lot of skin away from them to take the skin fold, but you know it, it makes the accuracy of skin fold equations in older adults um, you know, it, it's really decreased as a result of that. So we maybe need some better norms for older adults because comparing them to, you know, college-age students in many of the formulas just really is probably not a good predictor or, and few places are going to have access to gold standard measures of body comp like the DEXA scan or a bod pod. You know, most people are going to be looking at doing field-based tests like skin fold or maybe a bioelectrical impedance. We also talked a little bit too, you have more intramuscular fat as you get older. So you lose some of your lean tissue and that's replaced with fat within the muscle itself.